Yeah, very interesting conundrum. There's a lot of those conundrums that are not readily explained through gradualistic scenarios. Have you had a conversation with someone who's a Blitzkrieg hypothesis, who is of the opinion that the, the vast number of these Native American animals, North American animals, I have not, rather, but I'm pretty much familiar with most of the papers that they've written. And obviously, I think perhaps in the aftermath, there was a role for humans. However, when you see the assumption is, again, that see what we know now about the life ways of those late Ice Age peoples was that they hunted small game, they fished, they foraged. Mammoths would have been the largest, most dangerous animal to hunt. And when you think about the fact that if you look at the estimates for total global population back during the late Pleistocene, ranged from five to 10 million. The estimates that I've seen for the number of mammoths inhabiting the earth was about 12 million. So you've got at least one mammoth for every man, woman, and child, at least one of the conventional interpretations, mm. on Earth. Now, how do you exterminate not only the woolly mammoths, but the woolly rhinos, the mastodons, on and on and North on and American on? American lion. Yeah, exactly. I just don't think it makes sense. Now, what's that based upon? It's based upon the fact that there have been a few sites that were assumed to be kill sites, like, for example, at the Blackwater Draw, Clovis, New Mexico, they found a mammoth skeleton with a Clovis point between the ribs, in the rib cage. Well, there we go. There's the explanation. Well, what that tells us is that probably, you know, you don't have a catastrophe that's going to wipe out 12 million woolly mammoths and, and then leave humans completely unscathed. Mm. We see the Clovis culture basically disappearing at the Younger Dryas boundary.